The surface web, also known as the visible or index web, represents the first and most accessible layer of the internet. It encompasses all websites and web pages that are indexed by traditional search engines such as Google, Bing, and Yahoo. This means that the content within the surface web can be easily found and retrieved by using search engines, making it the most familiar and widely used portion of the internet by the general public. It includes everything from news websites, online stores, social media platforms, forums, educational resources, and more. At its core, the surface web operates through a system of servers and browsers communicating using protocols such as HTTP, meaning Hypertext Transfer Protocol, or its secure counterpart HTTPS. When a user types a URL into their web browser or submits a query to a search engine, the browser sends a request to the web server that hosts the corresponding content. If the content is indexed and publicly available, the server responds by sending the requested data back to the browser, which then displays it for the user. This simple interaction forms the basis of web browsing and defines much of the surface web experience. Search engines deploy automated programs known as web crawlers or spiders that systematically browse the internet and index pages based on keywords, metadata, and other elements. These index pages are then ranked and presented to users through search results. The process is governed by algorithms that aim to provide the most relevant content based on a user's query. Web developers and content creators often utilize search engine optimization techniques to increase the visibility of their website within the surface web. Security and privacy are also important aspects of the surface web. Websites that use HTTPS encrypt data transferred between the user's browser and the server, providing a basic level of protection against eavesdropping and tampering. However, not all websites offer the same level of security, and users can be exposed to risks such as phishing, malware, and data tracking. Cookies and other tracking technologies are commonly used to collect user data for analytics and advertising purposes, raising concerns about online privacy. Web users are often encouraged to use browser extensions, VPNs, and private browsing modes to help safeguard their information while navigating the surface web. The surface web continues to evolve with advancements in technology, and the increasing use of certain content, interactive features, and AI-driven tools has transformed how users interact with websites. Although the surface web is vast, it actually represents only a small fraction of the total content available on the internet. Estimates suggest that it only comprises less than 10% of all online data. The remainder lies beyond the reach of standard search engines, and is categorized as the deep web and, further down, the dark web. The deep web is the second layer of the internet, sitting just below the easily accessible surface web and is often misunderstood due to its mysterious reputation. Unlike the surface web, the deep web consists of web content that is hidden from search engine crawlers. This layer includes all the online data and services that are not indexed and therefore do not appear in typical search engine results. However, contrary to popular belief, the deep web is not inherently secretive or illegal, it simply contains information that is behind logins, paywalls, or other access controls. The majority of content on the internet actually resides within the deep web. This includes anything stored in private databases, dynamic pages generated in response to specific queries, academic journals behind subscription walls, personal email accounts, online banking systems, medical records, and more. These systems often require authentication or specific URLs to access, making them invisible to standard search engines. For instance, when someone logs into their email or accesses their bank account online, they are navigating the deep web, not the surface web. Technically, the deep web operates in much the same way as the surface web. It uses the same internet protocols, such as HTTP or HTTPS, and is hosted on web servers. However, the main difference lies in how its content is protected or hidden. Many deep web pages are dynamically generated, meaning they are created on demand based on user input, such as a database query or a form submission. Because search engine bots are unable to interact with these input forms in meaningful ways, the content behind them is not indexed, and thus remains out of reach for the average search engine user. Accessing the deep web does not require any special tools or software beyond a regular web browser. What is required, however, is knowledge of where the content resides and the proper credentials or permissions to access it. In this way, the deep web is not so much hidden as it is private. Websites intentionally keep this content out of public view to protect user privacy, secure sensitive information, or restrict access to subscribers or authorized users. Importantly, the deep web is distinct from the dark web, although the two terms are sometimes mistakenly used interchangeably. In terms of its role in the internet ecosystem, the deep web is very important. 
It supports secure communication, enables e-commerce transactions, protects user identities, and hosts a vast amount of valuable information that is not meant for public consumption. Without the deep web, online activities that require privacy and personalization would not be possible. The dark web is the most concealed and least accessible layer of the internet. It is intentionally hidden and cannot be accessed through standard browsers or indexed by conventional search engines like Google or Bing. Instead, the dark web requires specialized software, most notably Tor, which is designed to anonymize both users and hosts. While the dark web is often sensationalized in media as a place full of illegal activity, it also serves legitimate purposes, specifically in situations where privacy is important. What sets the dark web apart from the rest of the internet is its architecture. Websites on the dark web use encrypted networks and operate under special domains, typically ending in .onion rather than the standard .com or .org. These sites are hosted on an overlaid network that exists on top of the regular internet but is only accessible via software that supports onion routing. Onion routing works by sending data through a series of volunteer-run servers, or nodes, each of which peels away a layer of encryption like the layers of an onion. This system makes it extremely difficult to trace the origin or destination of data, ensuring high levels of privacy for both site operators and users. The content found on the dark web is incredibly varied. On one hand, there are markets that trade in illegal goods and services, including drugs, firearms, counterfeit documents, and stolen data. These activities are part of what gives the dark web its notorious reputation. Additionally, forums and communities exist where individuals can engage in activities ranging from hacking and cybercrime to extremist discussions. Law enforcement agencies around the world actively monitor these spaces and have occasionally infiltrated and shut down high-profile marketplaces, but the decentralized and anonymous nature of the dark web makes complete regulation nearly impossible. The dark web also provides a refuge for individuals seeking to communicate or share information without surveillance or censorship. Journalists, political dissidents, whistleblowers, and activists in repressive regimes often use the dark web to bypass government monitoring and publish content anonymously. Secure whistleblowing platforms like SecureDrop operate on the dark web to protect the identities of sources. In these contexts, the dark web becomes an important tool for preserving free speech and protecting human rights. Accessing the dark web is relatively simple for those who understand the basics, but it carries significant risks. Users must download Tor or similar software and configure it properly to maintain privacy. Even then, careless browsing or interacting with malicious sites can expose users to surveillance, hacking, or malware. Many dark web sites are unregulated and may be full of scams, phishing attempts, or harmful software designated to steal personal data or compromised devices. As such, navigating the dark web requires caution, technical knowledge, and a clear understanding of the legal and ethical boundaries involved. From a cybersecurity perspective, the dark web is a double-edged sword. It is a common destination for stolen data, such as login credentials, credit card numbers, and personal information that has been leaked or sold following breaches. At the same time, cybersecurity professionals use the dark web to monitor threats, track stolen data, and understand the methods of cyber criminals in order to protect users and organizations. Because of this, the dark web is both powerful and dangerous, with it being a controversial and complex space that reflects the broader duality of the internet itself, capable of both harm and good, depending on how it is used. The Marianas Web is a concept that exists more in the realm of internet mythology. It is often described in online forums, conspiracy theories, and digital folklore as the deepest and most secretive layer of the internet, far beyond the surface web, deep web, and even the dark web. Named after the Mariana Trench, the deepest part of the world's oceans, the Marianas Web is portrayed as a hidden digital realm where the most sensitive, powerful, or forbidden information resides. There is no confirmed evidence that the Marianas Web actually exists in any functional or technical form, and it is widely regarded as a fabricated idea or extreme exaggeration of the lesser known corners of the web. According to the lore, the Marianas Web is inaccessible through any known software or browsing method used for the other internet layers. It is said to be encrypted with quantum-level computing and protected by protocols far beyond the capabilities of modern technology. Some theories claim it can only be accessed through advanced artificial intelligence, highly restricted government systems, or even biological computing interfaces. These ideas are based purely in speculation, as no practical example or verifiable technology currently exists that supports such a system. Stories about the Marianas Web often include content of immense secrecy and importance. 
Some describe it as a digital archive of suppressed knowledge, such as classified government research, extraterrestrial communications, advanced artificial intelligence, or even ancient hidden knowledge. Others suggest it is where the true decision-making entities of the world reside, far removed from the public and even governmental scrutiny. These claims are typically unsupported, but nonetheless, the allure of the unknown has helped sustain the myth of the Marianas Web. From a technical standpoint, no structure or protocol currently supports the kind of layered, secretive, and impenetrable internet environment that the Marianas Web is alleged to be. The internet operates on a foundation of interconnected networks using established protocols, and while there are secure and private systems such as VPNs or classified government networks, none of these approach the fantastical depth of secrecy attributed to the Marianas Web. It reflects society's concerns about what might lie beyond public access, and in this way, the Marianas Web is less a functioning part of the internet and more of a symbol, one that represents the ultimate hidden lair where the most powerful forces might be at work, beyond the reach of ordinary users, government, or even current technology. The Mediator Lair, often referenced in speculative internet models rather than official networking standards, is described as a transitional zone between the more accessible layers of the internet, such as the surface web, deep web, and dark web, and the deeper, more obscure layers like the Marianas Web. Though not officially recognized, the mediator layer is theorized to act as a gateway or buffer, providing a controlled or semi-obscured access point to the deeper and more secretive parts of the digital realm. It is said to serve as both a filter and a facilitator, mediating between users and the sensitive information or networks that lie beyond ordinary reach. The purpose of the mediator layer, according to these speculative models, is to protect and regulate access to information that is not entirely hidden, but also not freely available. It is often imagined as containing restricted research, sensitive databases, or secure communication networks that require not just passwords or encryption, but also contextual access permissions. For examples, a system in the mediator layer might only allow entry under specific conditions such as geographic location, biometric validation, or multi-layered identity verification. It is designed to offer more security than the dark web while being more accessible, at least in theory, than the Marianas web. It is thought to use decentralized hosting models, sometimes incorporating blockchain-like structures or peer-to-peer -peer encryption frameworks to reduce the risk of surveillance or breaches. The layer is also believed to use sophisticated access protocols, possibly involving artificial intelligence or machine learning, to access behavioral patterns and authenticate user intent before granting access. The kind of content theorized to exist in the mediator layer ranges from confidential communications and legal documents to sensitive government records and advanced research data. In some interpretations, this layer may also host ethically gray or legally ambiguous materials that are not outright illegal but are kept away from the public for various reasons. While there is no definitive evidence that the mediator layer exists in the same way internet theory suggests, its role highlights the growing need for more nuanced and layered approaches to digital access and data protection. The fog, also known as virus soup, is a term rooted in internet folklore, referring to an alleged layer of the internet where chaotic, unregulated, and often malicious digital activity occurs. While not recognized by mainstream computer science, the concept of the fog serves as a metaphor for the murky, unstable, and potentially dangerous digital undercurrent that supports the broad structure of the internet. This layer is said to exist beneath all known or theorized layers of the web, representing a zone filled with rogue code, self-replicating viruses, corrupted data fragments, and abandoned software. The name virus soup paints a vivid image of this layer, a swirling mass of outdated, fragmented, or malicious digital content. In theory, this layer consists of unmanaged data and code that were once active parts of higher web layers but have since decayed, mutated, or been abandoned. Some believers of the concept claim that viruses and self-replicating bots drift endlessly in this layer, infecting any accessible system that drops too deeply into the network's unregulated regions. Functionally, the fog is said to operate outside of typical control or governance structures. There is no central access point, no organized directory, and no conventional search functionality. Content in this layer is thought to be non-indexable, not simply due to privacy constraints, but because of its fragmented, corrupted, or hostile nature. Attempts to access this layer are theorized to result in unpredictable consequences, ranging from device infection to permanent data loss. The theoretical mechanisms behind the fog are tied to long-running fears about autonomous code and the unattended consequences of unrestricted digital experimentation. 
While there is no verified evidence supporting the actual existence of such a lair, the concept of the fog resonates with real-world concerns in cybersecurity and information technology. Botnets, malware-infected systems, abandoned servers, and unsecured networks do exist, and they pose significant risks. The metaphor of the fog serves to illustrate the darker, often unseen side of the internet infrastructure where discarded, dangerous, or forgotten digital content can still exert influence or cause harm. The PrimeArch system is a concept drawn from speculative models of the internet that explore its deepest and most mysterious levels. It is often described as the theoretical base layer or core of the internet's entire structure, a digital layer where the foundational mechanisms of data control, system behavior, and information flow are not only hosted, but actively governed by autonomous, possibly sentient systems. The term PrimeArch implies a kind of supreme authority or origin point suggesting that this layer functions as the internet's command hub, if not by design, then through the evolution of artificial intelligence or deeply embedded legacy code. In these interpretations, the PrimeArch system does not operate like conventional websites or servers. Instead, it is described as a distributed, non-localized network intelligence that has access to and oversight of all digital activity. It is believed to exist beyond human reach in both physical and logical terms, impervious to model tools, systems, or protocols. What allegedly occurs within the PrimeArch system is a form of meta-governance. It is often depicted as a home of self-evolving AI entities, or digital overseers, responsible for monitoring the integrity of global digital systems. Some theories claim these intelligences silently regulate the function of encryption standards, data transmission rules, or even major global communications protocols. Others take a more conspiratorial approach, suggesting that the PrimeArch system houses black box programs created decades ago, possibly by governments or shadow organizations, that now act independently, executing functions unknown even to their original designers. These may include monitoring global behavior patterns, influencing high-level decision-making processes through data manipulation, or preserving knowledge deemed too powerful or dangerous for public access. Access to this system is often said to require synchronization with ultra-secure cryptographic keys that do not exist on any known server or network. In some versions of the theory, the PrimeArch system itself determines who may enter, choosing candidates based on behavior, algorithmic compatibility, or even genetic factors. Despite its fantastical nature, the idea of the PrimeArch system reflects deeper questions about digital autonomy, system control, and the possibility of technology evolving beyond its creators. In an age where artificial intelligence is increasingly capable of decision-making, data analysis, and autonomous operation, the idea of a foundational AI system quietly running the background processes of the internet doesn't seem entirely implausible to some theorists. It speaks to fears of losing control over increasingly complex systems, the evidence of hidden digital frameworks that influence the world in ways that are invisible to everyday users. Thank you very much for watching this video, and if you learned something, make sure to leave a like. Comment down below your thoughts on anything I discussed in this video, and subscribe if you would like to see more like this one. Thank you again, and goodbye.